Let's talk about the great mystery of electrical design in Revit. Why does no one use it to calculate voltage drop? You can size wires in Revit. It says it can calculate voltage drop, but nobody does. Take a look at how that voltage drop calculation works in Revit to see why no one actually ends up using it. Stay to the end of the video and I will show you a way that you can calculate voltage drop in Revit. The voltage drop calculation is a function of really three pieces that you need to get from Revit. You need to get the load on the circuit, you need to get the length of the wire, and you need to get the impedance of the wire. Using those three pieces of information, you can calculate the voltage drop on the circuit. Let's take a look at how Revit handles all three of those. I've got a very basic Revit project put together here. I wanted to strip out all the information so that we can focus on just the pieces that we want to look at for voltage drop. So let's start by taking a look at the load on the circuits. When I select this circuit, it has an apparent load associated with it from the loads of all the receptacles that are on it. So that's the load that Revit is going to use for the voltage drop calculation. That's pretty straightforward, though it does cause some problems that we're going to see uh, in a little bit. So we'll come back to that load. Next, we have the length on the circuit. And this is where Revit actually should be able to add a whole lot of value because it knows where all of these devices are in three-dimensional space. So calculating that length is something that it can actually do. Revit has the concept of a circuit path that it uses to calculate this length. If you select the device and select the circuit, you can then press edit path and see what that path looks like. You can see here the blue line that's running from that farthest receptacle to the panel. So that's the path that's being used for the calculation. Revit also has an option to change the path mode from farthest device to all devices, you change that and then it's going to calculate that path a little bit differently. So you can see here that the blue line is now running through all of the receptacles back to the panel. There's some options for modifying this path if you want to account for a different length. Just be aware that you could do that if you wanted to do it in Revit. It's actually not going to end up mattering all that much, but Revit can calculate this length. So that's one place where Revit is doing well on the voltage drop. One place Revit is going to struggle in voltage drop is what to do with that circuit length and that load. You can see on that circuit I was looking at, we have three receptacles and we have one distance. So it's assuming all of the load is at the farthest receptacle. And so if you have a single point load, that's going to work. If you have multiple loads, that's not going to work as well. I've set up a sample here to demonstrate that. All of these receptacles are pretty close to that panel. I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit here. And I have this panel here, and then I've got these receptacles a little bit farther away. So we've got enough distance here that we can start to see some voltage drop uh, coming into play. I actually have two circuits set up. The first has just the one receptacle in that top right corner. The second has two receptacles, one right next to the panel and then one farther away. In the first circuit, all of that load is going to be in that one receptacle. So the voltage drop is what Revit's going to calculate. It's got that distance to that receptacle and the whole load is there. For the second circuit, we have the receptacle that's closer to the panel. I actually put most of the load on that receptacle, though it then has the other receptacle that's farther away. So the question is, how do you calculate that voltage drop? If we take a look at the path in Revit, you can see that it's tracing from the one receptacle to the other receptacle back to the panel. So it's taking into account the location but it's putting the whole load of that circuit on that farther receptacle. So you have a voltage drop that's going to be far higher than it would actually be in real life. You really want the voltage drop on these two circuits to be different because they are actually modeled differently. If we go take a look at how those voltage drops are calculated in Revit, you can see that they actually have essentially the same voltage drop. They're a little bit different because the lengths are a little bit different just because of how I drafted everything up, but they have essentially the same voltage drop. The interplay between the load and the length in Revit isn't great, but it's probably something that you could work around if you were working on a project and trying to use Revit for your voltage drop. The last piece is going to be the impedance on the wire, and this is going to be a function of the wire material and the conduit material. Unfortunately, in Revit, you can't change that. Everything is calculated assuming copper wire. If you're using aluminum wire, you can't do that calculation. You very quickly run into a limitation where Revit just isn't going to work for the vast majority of projects that require voltage drop because it's copper wire or nothing. You also have no control over the wire sizes. Revit's going to size the wire based upon the voltage drop. It's going to keep it under the 3% that the NEC recommends. But if you need to adjust that for any reason, Revit doesn't let you. It tells you this is your wire size and this is what you're going to use and you can't change that. The most common place you're going to run into an issue with this is when you're sizing a motor. When you have a breaker, that has a larger size based upon the MOCP and they actually have a smaller wire based on the MCA. Revit is going to size the wire based upon that breaker that you've sized based on the MOCP. You can't size the wire based upon the MCA. It's going to be based upon the breaker size. And that's just looking at the wire sizing for the hot wires. It doesn't look at anything like the ground wires where Revit is giving you an equipment ground. If you have a service ground coming off a transformer, you can't change the ground size to account for that. So on first inspection, the wire sizing in Revit looks cool. It looks like it's going to have the ability 
ability to do voltage drop. That would be a good use of BIM for electrical engineers. As soon as you start trying to push it past the most basic voltage drop calculation, it all falls apart. As soon as you run into the limitations, you realize you're going to have to go back to Excel or your other calculation packages to do voltage drop calculations. Revit just isn't going to be able to cut it for anything but the most simplest project possible. At the top of this video, I tease that there is a tool that lets you do your voltage drop correctly in Revit. So let's rewind back to 2001. I was writing software at that time for AutoCAD to do voltage drop calculations and electrical design, just all based in AutoCAD, because at that time, Revit didn't exist. Revit shows up, it's largely for the architects at the time. They eventually add the components for systems, for the MEP design. I've got essentially a competing package running in AutoCAD, so I'm watching and I'm paying attention to it, seeing what they're doing for their electrical design. It's probably around 2012 or 2013 that my customers start encountering Revit and using it a little bit. And so I'm talking with them about the challenges that they have. And one thing that keeps coming up is that no one actually uses Revit for feeder sizing. And that just boggles my mind because feeder sizing is like the most obvious thing that you'd want to do in a BIM package for electrical engineers. I dig into it a little bit with them and I realize that, okay, Revit can size feeders, but not in a way that makes anyone happy. So no one actually uses it. That's just such an obvious oversight that we decide that maybe we should be the ones to write software for that. So we actually started in about 2013 writing software for Revit. So that first release of ElectroBIM was focused all on wire sizing and then all the calculations that come from that voltage drop and fault calculations and arc flash. We've expanded quite a bit since then, most notably adding single line diagrams. But really, it was that broken wire sizing that first compelled us to write our software for Revit. So since you've stuck around, let's do a quick overview of how ElectroBIM handles voltage drop calculations in Revit. Again, that first piece is the loads. We actually pull those loads from Revit because Revit already does loads. So we use the loads that Revit has. We do also have an option to do the voltage drop based upon 80% of the panel capacity. That way, if you don't have loads yet on your project, you can still do a voltage drop calculation. For circuit length, we pull the average length to a device from Revit rather than the length to the farthest device. It's a different way of doing the calculation. Neither one is gonna be 100% accurate. It's a question of what trade-offs you're making. This is where as engineers, you're doing engineering. Our thought was that average distance was a better starting point for the voltage drop calculation. If you look at these two circuits in ElectroBIM, you can see that our software is seeing different lengths for them. The first circuit is 200 feet and the other circuit is about 50 feet. We do also allow you to override that. So we've got a lot of options for that circuit length. We let you calculate it a couple different ways, including using that circuit length that Revit has calculated. And then we also have the ability to do a fixed length where you can specify what the length should be. So if there's for any reason you want to do your calculation using a different length, you can just type it in and the software is going to use that value. Finally, for the wire size, we give you good defaults, but we let you change those. So out of the box, it's going to be sizing to copper. But if you want to, you can size this wire to aluminum. And when we do that, the voltage drop is going to update. You can also change the wire size. If you want to use a different size copper wire, you can do that. And again, the voltage drop is going to update. We've even got options for equipment versus service grounds based upon the type of device that you're connected to. So we try to have lots of good defaults for the wire sizing, but again, letting you as the engineer override those values as appropriate. There's lots more our software can do. I'm not going to do a whole demo of it in this video. I do have a challenge for you. It's a game that engineers like to play when we're doing demonstrations called Stump the Salesman. So the way this works is that the engineer wins if they get me to say, no, I can't do something with the software. Drop a comment below for this video about your most obscure voltage drop scenario. I'll let you know if ElectroBIM can handle it or not. And uh, if you can get me to say, no, I can't do that, then that would be you winning the game of Stump the Salesman. If you really want to know all about how we do voltage drop, there's a couple trainings on this channel about how we do that. I've got a training video that's 20 minutes talking about just how we calculate wire lengths. So that's super exciting. We've also got 20 minutes on voltage drop. Again, thrilling stuff on calculating wire lengths, calculating voltage drop. If you want more details, check those videos out. If you want to know more about what the software can do, take a look at our website at designmaster.biz. And don't forget, post a comment to this video about your most obscure voltage drop scenario. I'm sorry I couldn't actually show you how to calculate voltage drop in Revit because of its limitations. You're going to be limited to doing it in Excel, another third-party package, or using a program like ElectroBIM.